Oh, hello, and welcome to Peach's TED Talk on Is Warcry the best fantasy skirmish game out there? Now, I know what you're going to say, Peachy, you always talk about Middle Earth strategy battle game being the best fantasy game out there. That's just hands down the best miniatures game available. I'm talking skirmish, I'm talking fantasy. Granted, if Mordheim was put out there, it'd be like picking between your favourite child. Don't have to worry about that yet because that's not been revamped. I'm talking war cry. So what I'm going to do is sit and paint a spy stalker from the Corvus Cabal whilst I wax lyrical about all the fun facts of war cry. But before we do that, let's talk about our sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. So for myself and Pat, this is like a YouTube milestone and rite of passage. Now as mobile games go, this is pretty blooming good and I've played it tons. But what I have discovered is it is a great resource for hobby inspiration. So for me, one of the great things about Raid Shadow Legends is the amount of characters you can pick from. There are literally thousands. I mean, Raid Shadow Legends actually state there's over 7,000, which is pretty insane. There's a plethora of factions to pick from. The Bannerlord faction feels like a love child between Empire and Bretonia, and they look pretty ace. Then there's the classic trope of the Dark Elves. However, my firm favourite are the Barbarians. Everything I love about the sword and sorcery genre is jam-packed into this faction and as such a huge inspiration for my painting and conversions. Now we have Cronam. Honestly, this guy would fit perfectly in the Bloodwind spoil as a wandering chaos badass smashing baddies to pieces. Or if you're after some Red Sonja vibes, you have either Tashada, or for a more classic Bridget Nielsen version, you have the Hill Nomad. I would fit perfectly in my Akshi Barbarian Warband. But my top pick is the Sky Touch Shaman. In this game, she's a top healer, but sits nicely in my Corvus Cabal and a conversion I do intend to create. Regardless of which faction or heroes you pick as your favorites, just scrolling through the character index in game will give you countless hobby inspiration. Raid Call of the Arbiter is in full swing now. To celebrate this epic limited series, Raid's adding some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play with in game, which is pretty cool. The first one is Artak, a mighty orc warlord, and Artak is going to be available to everyone for free. All you have to do is just log into the actual raid for seven days between now and July the 24th. If you've seen episode one of Call of the Arbiter, you'll definitely want this guy, and if you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? Go check it out, and then remember to log in for seven days to get Artak. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? It's free. Use our link in the description or scan the QR code to get amazing bonuses. These include the epic champion Knight Errant from the Bannerlords faction and other useful things like energy refills, skill tomes, XP boosters. Once you're in and crushing your enemies, come and find us under the name The Impaler. And if you're fast enough, you can join our clan, The Painting Phase. But you have to be really quick because it's filling fast. So just hit the link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Now with all those ideas of conversions buzzing around my head, and there's quite a few, Let's start painting a Corvus Cabal Spire Stalker. So Warcry, why is it the best fantasy miniatures game? Well, there's many reasons. Firstly, it is so easy to learn. I mean, really easy to learn. I'm, I'm, that's not a statement I say lightly because I struggle sometimes with rules. It's intuitive, well-designed, um, and it's fast, fun. You can literally play games in an evening. Not even an evening, it's like a couple of, uh, an hour. You can play a game in an hour, half an hour. That's how fast and action-packed it is. I mean, you could literally play through several games in one evening with your buds. Uh, maybe even a full campaign in a day. It's, it's so simple and it might seem quite daunting at first, but once you play, you're in your first turn and you've been explaining the rules, it all falls into place pretty quickly. Like many folks, I get super attached to my characters. Um, if you play Necromunda or Mordheim, uh, you do love and you put a lot of effort in there. So it's so when you're doing like full narrative campaign stuff like that, I hate watching my heroes perish. Um, and I just think it's just so well put together that you can play simple, quick games if you've got half an hour at lunchtime, or you can do like a whole bunch of narrative hooks now, another thing to point out about Warcry is Workshop has done a very good job of making a set of dedicated miniatures solely for this game system. I mean, they can be used elsewhere in your Chaos Warbands or like any of Age of Sigma game, but those Warbands are on another level. I mean, there's so many to pick from. You've got, like in this video, we're currently painting the Corvus Cabal, which are weird bird people. They're, they're great. I mean, that's such a different design aesthetic that you would never have seen like in Old Hammer. And this is another thing, I know I'm going on, but here's another thing. You could literally take these tribes when Old Hammer comes out, so the Old World, chaos in the Old World in the Northern Wastes have so many different tribes and they all have cool names. These will fit in perfectly um, with, with that system as well. Now, let me tell you a story about why my experiences of Warcry have brought me to this conclusion that I think it's the best game. 
when it was released, uh, it's probably like autumn time of 2019. It was announced in July. Uh, it was I was very excited to see it. It was great packaging, um, lots of like cool warbands that were announced and this, that and the other. Didn't really connect with it to start off with. It came out, the box set came out. The box set's huge, it's got so much in there. You had the Untamed Beasts, the Iron Golem, and then all this cool scenery. And still, wasn't interested in playing it. Did some stuff for Warmer TV, paint up the Untamed Beasts. Duncan did the Iron Golem. I enjoyed painting them. They were cool Chaos Warband guys, very Conan-esque, like I've mentioned previously. Um, but I didn't play it. So one day I was asked to play a battle report on Warmer TV Live. Never played the game at this point, so I was a bit sort of like, Ugh. I got me in Warband. Weirdly, I built some Warbands for, for Warcry. I just never got around to playing it. Um, and I'd done uh, some Daughters of Cain. I'd given them like these, this red skin uh, thing, which was based off a character called Purgatory uh, from Red Sonja's Dynamite novels. Really cool looking aesthetic. I thought that would look cool on Daughters of Cain. So I, I did a bespoke Warband for that. Really proud of him. And then I got to play a game with Ben Gala on live and I was a bit nervous I was like Ben how, how do I play this game I, I don't know what I'm doing he's like don't worry we'll do a small game to start off with and they'll ease you in and I literally had four figures he had four figures and within the very first turn and like I've activated a couple of characters I got the rule system not all the big rules like running climbing and all this and the other but most of the basics nailed that's what I'm talking about as an intuitive war game and at first glance, I was like, it's quite good fun, I'm enjoying it. You know, there's a bit of to and fro in, it's feeling, it's getting those Lord of the Rings vibes that I like, where you have like the skirmish games, you've got priority, you take it in turns. Then there's that extra dynamic of the, the ability dice that you roll. So depending if you get doubles or triples or quads, they give you abilities in the game, which is also pretty good fun. You save those up, you can be super tactical. So a lot of folks out there go, Warcry is pretty flat, it's not very tactical. Disagree, strongly disagree. So if you've never played it, and this is your first time experiencing it, like just me waffling on in my TED talk about it, there's so many little nuances. So the first thing you do before you play a game, if you're doing it properly in match play, you get a deployment card. This deployment card describes where those groups come from and at what point they come up from. So sometimes they could all be deployed at the same time. And as I've had a few times, it could be one starts on the battlefield and then the rest come in round three. Then you get your victory conditions, which give you like what you need to do. Then you get your twist. The twist is the thing that I love because sometimes it's a benefit and most of the time, massive negative. And I think this is the thing where I've heard a few people say it's not a very good rule system. I'll tell you why, it's because they're not good at strategy. You have to think on your feet with this game. You don't, you, there's no meta. There's no sort of like, I know the numbers, I've got the best warband possible, I can't possibly lose because if I roll this average of these dice and I do this and I deploy here, I'm gonna win. Warcry gets that, puts it in a blender and destroys it. So it, you have to think on your feet whilst you're playing it. So anyone that says it's not a good rule system, are terrible tacticians in my opinion because they can't think on their feet. Maths has been destroyed. It is now just like, oh dear, stress time. How do I deal with the situation? And then that one game or those three games in that night literally changed my life when it came to war game. And every single day, night after that, I was building different war bands from different factions to the point where I'm still doing it now and I'm dolls housing scenery. I started doing this Hag Valkyr interior labyrinthine sort of temple for my daughters of Cain. I went down a right rabbit hole and this is the problem I think with, with me and like skirmish games, certainly Warcry, is you the, the mechanics of the game are simple, easy to learn, but it's so expansive from a narrative hook and point of view. So I decided I was going to focus on a daughters of Cain temple. And I started making bookcases, I started making temples, pools of blood. So I started adding all these extra cool things, made myself my own little home, dolls housed it to, to the nines. And then that, that wasn't it. It was like, oh, I'm going to do another warband. Oh, I'm going to do some Slash, because Slash and Daughters of Cain, they don't get on, they hate each other. I'll, I'll do some Slash. The problem I found with Age of Sigma, and it's not, the game's great, but you, invest, you have to invest so much time in collecting an army and I have put hours and hours into my Age of Sigma army, my Cities of Sigma, and I've played one game. And that's two, three years of building up. One game, two, three years of effort. And that's not like anyone's fault. That's my fault getting together with friends and this, that, and the other. But with Warcry, I've played countless games, but I've scratched so many itches. I've done this Cities of Sigma warband. I've done that Cities of Sigma warband. I've done pretty much most of the warbands that were available at the time. So like the Iron Golem, the Untamed Beast, the Spy Tyrants. I've got like some new ones which are converted to be more slashy. I've got the Cypher Lords game, Slanashy Heads. So all these things I was able to do and tweak 
that cater to me, but I'm painting like what? eight, nine figures at a time. Even if there's like a range out there you're not interested in and you just think, oh, everyone else is going on about it and I just paint a handful. I mean, I've done a hob, hob grot slitter warband. It's like, what, 10 figures and one cruel boy. And it's just funny because he's a rubbish cruel boy and he's not very good, but he's in charge of like little tiny goblins because that's that's all he can be in charge of because everyone else beats him up. So you can like go down narrative hooks like that. You've got a really rubbish orc who's not very good and the only way you can like get any control and command is to bully the little guys underneath him. So there's so many little things you can do. And you know what? If you're an Underworlds fan and you've got a bunch of warbands, they all work in Warcry. There are rules available to use those in Warcry as well. So don't just sit there going, well, I've got all these things I can't do anything with and I want to play Warcry. You can, you totally can. You can just mix them together. Job done. So to summarize, Warcry, why is it the best fantasy skirmish game? Fast, fun, easy to learn, but then, you know, there's loads of extra things you can develop from that easy to learn mechanic. The campaigns, there's so many campaigns, there's so much extra nuance to each of your warbands you collect, um, and you can scratch so many itches when it comes to playing. And before you know it, you'll have several scenery sets, a whole bunch of warbands, and you're getting your mates over, they're getting into it, because I've done that loads with all the people at head office and here, getting pat into it. I played a game with him. I know he wants to play more. I know we've already got him doing things for Necromunda, but there's more. I'm just going to take over the world on teaching people how to play Warcry. But it is a really simple rule system. And if you're into D&D &D and not Age of Sigma, there's so many things in here that you can use. I mean, get yourself some print minis, chuck them in there, play Warcry, find, find the fight cards. Um, but yes, it is in my humble opinion, the best rule system. And when a rule system is so easy to pick up in the first turn, and a five-year-old, my lad, can pick up half the rules of that game, that tells you something about the rule system. There we are, we've done our Spire Stalker. It's finished, ready to add to the rest of the warriors of that warband and get playing some games with those two. And I can just go, dookie, dookie, kaka, kaka. I can do that all the way through the game because they're all bird people. But Warcry, great game, best game ever. Why are you telling me this, Peachy? Well, a simple reason. That's so easy to get hung up on other people's opinions. I mean, obviously this is my opinion, my humble opinion, but I heard so many people say, oh, Warcry's not very good, this, that, and the other. Oh, this game's not very good. Oh, don't play that, it's, it's a rubbish game. Try games, give them a go, because you'll be pleasantly surprised. I was the same with this game. When it came out, I wasn't interested until I played the game, loved it. Necromunda, uh, I, I left that too long. I mean, I love Necromunda for the past, but the new rules, I left it and left it and left it and wish I hadn't. And I need to get off that high horse peachy and play Blood Bowl. There's just too many people out there telling me it's a good game. I had one bad experience. I need to get off my high horse and play it. And I intend to do that. So that is a learning for me is I talk about the rules being, oh, I don't like Blood Bowl. Nah, it's just got one negative experience and I need to get off it. So that is my learning here is give a game a go. Try it, play it, and you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you can do with it. So thank you for joining my TED Talk on why Warcry is the best fantasy skirmish game out there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget the like and subscribe button. Um, and of course, thank you to our patrons as always. You guys are amazing and allow me to have massive rants about my favorite game system out there. There's going to be more. I'm going to be talking about Middle Earth. I'm going to be talking about more time if and when they ever make it. There's probably going to be a video about this, about Necromunda. I'm just not going to stop. Skirmish for the win. Slaters, taters, alligators somewhere in there as well, maybe. Don't forget to install Raid Shadow Legends, either scan our QR code or click the link in the description for insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion.